I have a weakness for not dying! I don't think we're gonna make it! Sugar. Just 1,096 calories per serving. I'll have one. Here you go, Copernicus. Ooh, oranges. <coughs> You're not supposed to eat it. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Ethan, I'm just $22 away from going to science camp next week. And I'm just $120 away from buying that three-foot gummy bear. Yeah, okay. What? It's 40 pounds of glucose. That's pretty sciencey. Hm. Ooh, ooh, hi, oh. Tuttle Twins. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, hi, Karen. Want to buy some lemonade? It's pronounced Karen. That's what I said. And I don't buy lemonade. According to Section B, Clause W, Paragraph 16 of the Cul-de-Sac Kids Club Laws, the president, namely me, gets lemonade for free. The Kids Club president gets to drink all the lemonade she wants for free, now and always? Amen? Amen. What? No fair! That's stealing! Uh-uh-uh, Ethan. It's not stealing if it's a law. And we voted on it. When? I held an emergency meeting last night. All in favor. <laughs> it was unanimous. Karen scares me. It's Karen! <laughs> <sighs> Look, Mom's here with Grandma Gabby. Grandma, Grandma Gabby! Gabby! Smaller copies of my DNA. How are you, amorcitos? Kids, Grandma Gabby's going to be moving in with us. Her retirement community doesn't allow illegal pets. HOAs are full of communists. Isn't that right, Derek? <laughs> Who likes eating garbage off the floor and occasionally spreading diseases? <laughs> you do. I didn't know you could tame a raccoon. You can? <laughs> Come on, Mama. I'll get you set up in your new room. Ahem. I'll take my lemonade now. <laughs> and I'll take some soap to your pie hole. What? Nothing. By the way, you're welcome for everything I do for this kids club. Mm. Hasta luego. Mm. What are we supposed to do now? Mm. Oh! Uh, sorry, Copernicus. Ooh, let me eat this way. Club laws say she's allowed to take it, so it must be right, right? Sounds like a stupid law. What's that, Derek? Mm -hmm. You think the twins could use a little lesson about laws? Well, I agree. Huh? Hmm? Oops, it was on slow. <laughs> I guess I can kiss science camp goodbye. <laughs> They're just so tiny! <gasps> Whatever. <sighs> Ethan, what's that noise? You know I have IBS. No, not that noise. The other noise. It sounds like it's coming from Grandma's room. No. Buenas noches. Grandma? Are you okay, Grandma? We heard something that sounded like an acetylene welding torch. We were worried because Karen calls the police if we make noise past 9.30. And because it's an acetylene welding torch. 
Is that an acetylene welding torch? Good thing I have the cops on speed dial. Vamos! We gotta get to an appointment! This light? No, that's crazy! The appointment's at 2 p.m. in the 1800s. <laughs> You have a digital clock? That's connected to a time machine. You have a time machine that's connected to a digital clock? That's oddly specific, but yes. It's also an interdimensional portal, spaceship, huh? and grill. I make a mean kebab. How? The secret is to space them out evenly, and then you can do No, the... I mean, how'd you build it? You'd be surprised what you can do with a PhD in physics, carbon alloy, and that little plastic thing that holds a bread bag closed. Uh -huh. Hmm, what powers this thing, Grandma? Knowledge! You know, knowledge is power. That's just an expression. <gasps> that I turned into a renewable energy source. Knowledge juice. A lot of knowledge, a lot of juice. Bad and pending. Now hold on! <laughs> That's a good one, Grandma. <laughs> hold on to what? Ah! Emily! Remind me why we're on this death trap again! You know I have a weakness for science! <laughs> and I have a weakness for not dying! I don't think we're gonna make it! Why don't you think we're gonna make it? I do. I just wanted to provide a little suspense for that opening scene. <laughs> oh, Grandma, you're driving like a crazy person! Oh, mijo, I'm not driving. <laughs> To read the superimposed text? Just a pit stop in the middle of a French Revolution? Why? Gotta return my friend's bidet. That's French for salad bowl. No, it's not. Well, that's what I used it for. Ugh. <laughs> hey, just a little French comedy. Thanks for letting me borrow the bidet. It sprays salad dressing with such force. It's not for salad. These are my grandkids. Ethan and Emily meet Frederick Bastia, a wise French economist who is working on a book called The Law. Ugh, sounds like a textbook. Ooh, sounds like a textbook. My book is about the ideas that laws should protect our God-given rights or natural rights. Having rights means there are some things you can do and nobody is allowed to stop you! Yeah, that does sound like a textbook. People are revolting. I agree. People are very revolting. No, uh, they're literally revolting right now because their rights are not being protected. Laws should help to protect our rights. For instance, we all have a right to life. Which means I can live, even if lots of people don't want me to. Huh? huh? I've upset a lot of Soviets. Who hasn't? <laughs> and we all have a right to liberty, which means we can do stuff without people stopping us. We can say the things we want to say. Like, Mr. Bastier, you should wear deodorant. Ooh! That felt good. Touche. Or go where we want to go. Like church. Or the deodorant store. Okay, I get it. <laughs> or do whatever we want. As long as it doesn't take away anyone's rights or hurts them. Aww. Finally, we have a right to property, which means no one can take our stuff. Like my collection of assorted gummy bears. Uh-uh-uh. Or my wild yet practical planner. Or my parking tickets. Uh, uh, uh. Oops, there goes my property. Oh. It's fine. They would expire anyway. Right. <laughs> Rights to life, liberty, and property are so important, they need to be protected. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. And if they're not protected, people suffer, quality of life declines, and this happens. what it is. Thanks for the salad bowl! Take me with you! Oh no! We're out of knowledge juice! <laughs> Maybe it was all those bathroom stops? 
You probably should have stopped at nine slushies, Grandma. <laughs> ah, worth it. What are we gonna do? Well, until you each learn a valuable lesson in the time it takes to watch a children's show, not counting commercials if this goes to network, we'll never have enough knowledge juice to get home. <laughs> Deputy Gabby. Sheriff Winkles. Does Grandma know everybody? Of course not, mijo. I've never met Kevin Bacon. <laughs> but I sure would love to. <laughs> you must be the Toto Twins. Welcome to the peaceful town of Quiet Valley. <laughs> or at least it was before those bandits showed up. Sheriff Winkles, Deputy Gabby, bandits are stealing my cows. Uh... Oh, oh, hey, hold it right there. You're stealing someone else's property. Stealing is against the law and violates her rights. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna file that tidbit in the garbage. It's our job as the government to enforce those laws. And that's how it should be. The government is the people the community pays to help protect their rights. Is this like a teaching moment? Or did you want the bandits to escape? Uh, it was a teaching moment. <clears throat> Good afternoon, folks. The bandits are back. Freeze, bandit. I'm no bandit. I'm a newly hired government tax collector. <laughs> Same thing. And I'll need to collect some cows for my new cow selling business. It'll create new jobs here in town and new money in my pockets. It's all right here in the law. Uh, I suppose it is. <laughs> A law that takes people's money and gives it to someone else's business? That's lame. Our government at home doesn't make us help other people's businesses, right, Grandma? <laughs> of course not. Except for oil, agriculture, green energy, housing, automobile manufacturers, healthcare, export subsidies, education, ethanol, professional sports, pharmaceuticals, military industrial complex, etc., etc., etc. Whoa. Bummer. Boomer. And I'll need to take another cow for this charity dog. This'll help the poor folk, of which I am a part. Hmm. Thank you kindly. I guess that's fine, right, Carla? Because it's going to a good cause? The thing is, I already give cows to the poor on my own, not because the government makes me. But now, I'm back to where I started. No cows. I'm awful sorry, Carla. I just wish there was more we could have done. Stupid laws. <gasps> uh, hold on, Sheriff. You said a government is the people a community pays to protect their rights, right? Right. Right. These laws aren't protecting Carla's right to life, liberty, or property. They're just making her support other people's businesses or forcing her to do nice things. Hmm. That's true, I suppose. And bad laws like these turn the government from the good guys into the bad guys. I guess you're right. So you're the sheriff. You can help change the law, right? <gasps> if the people really know about these bad laws, they can change them. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew those kids could learn. <laughs> Pay up. I'm calling a town meeting right now. We're going to get the people to change these laws. Your speech was awesome, Sheriff. I thank you, Ethan. Those bad laws didn't stand a chance. The people voted against the laws unanimously. <laughs> Order whatever you want, guys. It's on me. Water, please. Hold the cholera. And I'll take a glass of milk. Mm -hmm. What? Give me my usual root beer. See that? Carla is a generous person even when the law doesn't force her to be. Well, hi, you ding-dongs. <laughs> I guess it's back to plan C, which is also plan A. Take them cows by force. <laughs> Everybody, stay down. <gasps> Use your wheelchair, Grandma. I can't. We need more power. Quick, what have you learned? Oh! 
Think, think. Uh, okay, the law should help protect our right to life, liberty, and property. Oh! Hmm. Oh! Uh, government is basically hiring someone to protect your rights from bad guys. All right, more wisdom gas. Knowledge juice, Ethan. Oh, I know. I was just thinking about rebranding it. Not now. <laughs> but a bad law means the government might turn into the bad guys. If it's wrong for me to steal something, it's also wrong for the government to steal. <laughs> so the law should protect our rights and not turn the government into the bad guys. Bingo! Oh, and the wheelchair's back to full power, too. <laughs> this isn't root beer, Grandma. Como? It's ginger ale. Mm-hmm. But we don't have any cows, and Carla has lots. Yeah, we really need cows. And I really need a bunion removed, but you don't hear me complaining about it. And those things are still no excuse for violating Carla's rights. <laughs> ha! Millennials. These probably aren't necessary, Grandma. Hmm? Huh? Ah! <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Great work today, Ethan and Emily. Now, you're officially honorary deputies. Thanks for defending our rights. And thank you for reminding me how. Oh, awesome. Vamonos! We have places to go, people to see, communists to offend. <laughs> My fellow countrymen, country children, thank you for gathering for this cul-de-sac kids club emergency meeting to re-vote on section V class W paragraph 16 of the kids club laws. I thought this was fight club. I'll stay. If it's not right for any of us kids to take lemonade from each other, it's not right for the president of the kids club to take it either. Ugh. All in favor of changing the law, raise your hand. Hmm. <laughs> Hi, new boy. I like your tail. That settles it. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Fine. I'll pay for my lemonade from now on. Let's celebrate. This time, the lemonade is on us. And it's our choice to give it. No law is making us. Thanks, but it's warm. Eh, what you gonna do? But hey, we're back in business. Science camp. Giant gummy bear. Here we come. The new boy ate my shoe. I wonder where we're going this time. Okay, Grandma, if that's even your real name. I'm coming for you. <laughs> if it's not right for me to steal from you, then it's not right for the government to steal from us, too. Good laws protect our rights every day and every night. But a bad law turns the government into the bad guys. I would have picked a different ending. Yeah, I thought you were a little pitchy. Welcome back, everybody. I could tell in the comments that a lot of you really enjoyed the show. Some of you hated it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there was that one guy. There was that one guy. There's always that one. <laughs> no, but I'm um, so glad to see so many of you enjoying it there in the comments. And yeah, we're super excited about this. I've got Connor with me. Most of you know Connor Boyack at this point. Some of you don't. Um, 
quick introduction for those that don't. Uh, so I'm the author of the Tuttle Twins books, and along with Elijah Stanfield, our illustrator, got this project going, and super excited to be here and watch that episode, and I was having a hard time keeping up with the comments. They are just flying, and people were having fun, so this is a super exciting thing to be a part of. Awesome. Thanks for taking time today to make this happen with us. So let's talk a little bit again about our release schedule. Tuttle Twins Tuesdays. Next Tuesday, it will not be the episode, but it will be a round table where we talk a little bit about the creation of the episode, why we made some of the decisions that we did in writing and things like that. So tune in for that on the app, again, the Angel app, that's where you'll find that content. And then the next Tuesday after, October 26th, that's when we'll, that's when we'll release episode two. So you can look forward to that on Tuttle Twins Tuesday. So just a little reminder about that and maybe even they'll throw up a graphic that shows kind of the release schedule overall where we're releasing in November and then in December through the end of the year there. So we're really excited about to get these six episodes out to all of you the first half of the season. Okay, um, and a lot of you I'm sure are asking right now, I'm just gonna anticipate it because I know Jared's gonna say, oh, they're asking about when's the, <laughs> what are the other six episodes? Okay, so the mm. first half of the season is releasing all this year through December. The second half of the season will be releasing next year more towards the kind of April, May sort of mark is where we're gonna start up, do a similar type of thing, assuming this is all successful. Where we'll be assuming, assuming this is all. That's right. It's going to be course. successful. You guys are with us, so it's going to be great. But um, yeah, so the next half of the season, episodes seven through twelve, will be next year, some somewhere in the April to May kind of mark. We'll have a little bit of a break in between, where you can just enjoy your your freedom is wild T-shirt, <laughs> wear it every day and wear it out until until then. Again, this is um, uh, just as a reminder. This is only available for the next two weeks. This is version one of the shirt. Version two will release with episode two, and it will have some a different look to it, some different uh, things that are going on, but the exclusive T-shirt release is today. You can order that now, TuttleTwins.store, as well as you can order the books there, and you can order the, what did I talk about? The graphic novel, right? Mm -hmm. We'll have a graphic novel for each episode, so just as a reminder to all of you about that. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about the Angel app. Go to the App Store or Google Play and download the Angel app today. That's where all the exclusive Tuttle Twins content will be released. Every episode will be streamed on there. Every, every round table will be on there. You'll be able to access and shop for all the goodies that we'll have for Tuttle Twins. And there'll also be the ability within the app to pay it forward. So big vision we talked, or I talked about that before, um, before we've, we've talked about it plenty we've as well. We've talked about it plenty, <laughs> is we want to reach 100 million kids. And obviously that is first and foremost people within your community, your friends, your neighbors, your family, um, and then extending beyond that around the world. And we continue to think about what the world can look like in 10 years after reaching 100 million kids and really getting these principles deep into their hearts through all of this um, awesome content. and. That is only possible one way, and that's through your help. Uh, we can't do that alone. Um, we need to make this show not only accessible, but free, right? You got to watch it for free, which is awesome. And if you love the show, we're creating a way for you to be able to pay it forward for other people to watch it as well. So on the Angel app, if you open up your app, you'll see a pay it forward button. You can click on that for $15 you can make it so that at least 10 other kids can watch this show for free. That's what you can do. And then you can slide up and actually make it so a lot more people can watch for free, depending on mm -hmm. your financial means and how awesome you think the show is or, yeah. or all those things. But that really is only going to be possible through all of you guys. The, the pay it forward, that's, that's what made it possible for you to watch for free. And it's going to be, that's going to be kind of the driving train going forward. Is, is really all of your help in making it so that people in even places like, not just in your own community and like your, your immediate friends and neighbors, but like people in Africa obviously aren't gonna have any 
oh, yeah. chance to um, be able to watch something like this without your help. Well, so. if there's a barrier in front of this show, it stops it from spreading as quickly. And Absolutely. so for us, the goal is to keep it free so that we can spread it across the world, but you know, like you say, through our neighborhoods and texting friends. Have you seen the show, right? We right. want the, there to be like no barriers so that people can just get into the show. And when they watch it and they love it, those people can be the means by which we can spread it even further. And you're gonna get, I think, perks at different levels and stuff, right, if you're paying it forward. And so uh, this is the model that we feel confident in to really spread this across the, the globe. Um, but really impact our communities. I love thinking about this goal and like in a decade from now, the future politicians and leaders in our communities, if they've grown up on the Tuttle Twins, how much different can our world be? And it starts with a simple cartoon and some books and really just educating people. So um, it's a, a goal I think we can all share. And like you say, I think we very much need the community to help us make it happen. Oh, for sure. And the paying it forward thing, we've made it so easy within the app. And what, what I really like about it is Again, like you said, it just removes all that friction. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times people will be like, oh, there's this cool show, go and watch it. They're like, oh, it's on HBO, I don't have HBO. Oh, it's on Amazon, maybe I don't have an Amazon. I have yet. four subscriptions have already. Do I need another subscription exactly. or another thing? You yeah, know? and right. we're not gonna be asking for any of that, right? None, none of this upfront money, the friction and stuff, it's, none of that's there. It's, well, this is gonna be free and accessible so that as many people can watch it. And especially if you say, you know, there's this cool show about freedom. I mean, if there's someone that's kind of in the middle, or maybe doesn't even think about politics or, or principles of freedom a whole lot, or economics is the furthest thing from their mind, then if they have to go and pay for it, they're never gonna experience it. But if like, oh, I can just pull up this thing on an app with my kids, and then they can watch it for free, sure, I'll give it a try. Yeah. It just really helps get that flywheel going. So that's what it's all about. That's how we get there. That's how we get to 100 million kids, is through your help and the pay it for it. And obviously things like, you know, buying exclusive t-shirts helps as well. We're buying the books, all that stuff is going to be very helpful in charging forward. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Nifty Gift. So for the first 1,000 of you that have downloaded the Angel app, you are getting a Nifty Gift, which is an exclusive gift uh, for you that is a little bit of a, well, I guess we're not gonna really dive into that deep here, but essentially you'll be getting an email to be able to claim that gift. So watch out for that email after you've downloaded the app and it will give you some details on how to click on a link and claim that gift and that'll be something you'll really want in the future. We'll expand on that a little bit later, but I want one I'm, excited, too, so. I'm excited about it. It's just I already really... downloaded the app. <laughs> so it's uh, if you haven't got the app, it's go time, go get it. Um, app Store, Google Play, look it up. A the Angel app is what it is, search Angel and uh, that'll come right up, assuming that we've dialed in all of our search terms. Well, people will see it has a little Tuttle yes. Twins icon. It right? will have a Tuttle Twins icon on that, which mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier, and you can download that and get it going. Um, are we, did we miss anything on that? No, we're good, okay. <laughs> all right, um, let's go into a, little, a few questions for Connor. Um, a little bit more backstory. How did you end up, you know, writing all of these, right? You, you, you were in sixth grade and you said, one day. One day I, I want to write kids books. children's books, right? That's how it started? No, so, um, so Elijah, who's the illustrator, and I had known each other for a couple of years and we both had young kids. And so we had been talking about, you know, working together on a future project or what we might do. And so I run Libertas Institute, which is a think tank. Uh, we change laws and that's kind of, uh, we're involved in political reform and things like that. And so when my kids were young, right, I would come home every day and I'd say, hey, tell me you know, how your day was and what you did. And every once in a while they would reciprocate the question, right? What did you do today, dad? And I'm like, how do you talk about fighting eminent domain with a five-year-old, <laughs> like, you know, or like socialism with a six-year-old or whatever? And so these ideas were in my head of like, how do I talk to my kids? I literally went on Amazon and I was like, you know, books that teach freedom for kids or libertarian books for kids or how do you teach conservative principles to a six-year-old and trying to find like what's out there. Because like if it's potty training or the birds and the bees, or like there's books for everything, right? Yeah. I'm like, surely there's gonna be books to help me talk about these political and economic ideas for my kids. There was nothing. There was just absolutely Zilch. nothing. Yeah. And so because I, I did the same search actually. Yeah. So when, when Elijah and I had kind of been talking already and then when I was doing this on my own, I was like, okay, there's something here. So Elijah and I teamed up to do a book and, and no vision for like what this has become, right? Like it was just, oh, this will be fun and let's do a book and let's see if people like it and maybe one day it'll like turn into a second book or 
And so people bought it. People really, really responded, and there was clear market demand. Have that one here? Uh, yeah, there's the, the law. There yeah, yeah, that was the first one, right? Yep. Kicked it all off. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so to us, there was clear market demand, even even at a small, small level, because no one knew what Tuttle Twins was. There was no brand recognition. There was no nothing. But there was enough response where Elijah and I both felt like, okay, let's do a second, and then let's do a third, and then the more we do that, the more opportunities that opens up because the community gets larger and people are sending us our ideas, and then people like you and I and others start talking about, hey, we could do this other project and kind of grow this movement in this community into something much bigger. And so um, it's been amazing to see, as we've worked on the Tuttle Twins over the years, that people, the biggest response we get from, from parents are like, where was this when I was growing up? <laughs> Why didn't I have this 10 years ago when my kids were younger? Yeah. And so uh, it's clear that we're filling a void now with this project that has been left neglected for a long time. Yeah. Um, and it excites me to think of where this can be with our goal of 100 million kids in, in you know, a decade, where things can be in a decade and what new opportunities are presented by us working on this project and growing the community and seeing that there's so much demand and need, especially in our crazy world right now, for the ideas that are in these books and that are now in the cartoon. Yeah, absolutely. I share that vision as well. And the books have been huge. Like, like I mentioned, I basically did a similar kind of search and was looking around for different materials for my kids. And so when you introduced the first book to me, because we, we'd been you know, friends prior, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm buying that right now. Mm -hmm. And then um, you know, I've bought every one since. I think I've bought them a couple times over. Because you, <laughs> the you do these amazing sales and deals where my wife will be like, do we have that one? I don't know. The, the, it's a better deal if you buy them Just all Just get once. them I'm again. Like, so I'm pretty sure we have a couple copies of, of all of them uh, there at home. But yeah, they are really good at creating clarity for kids, of really helping them understand things in a way that's Kind of both speaking to them at their level as well as kind of help, helping elevate Building them. Building them up. Yeah, yeah which is really um, a little bit of a part challenge. Of I, yeah, part of it that I re really appreciate. And then um, how do you decide, you know, what book you're going to do next? Because you, you do have more books coming. We got a lot more books coming in the pipeline. Um, we've had, as I said with our community, we've had a lot of people over the years who are like, hey, do, a, do a, you know, book about this, book about this. So we get a long list. Yeah. And part of what Elijah and I will do is as we get done with one book, we'll then discuss what's going on in the world, what's crazy. So like our, our most recent book uh, that we did is The Crisis of Leviathan, uh, which we turned into The Tuttle Twins and The Leviathan Crisis. And this is all about how during times of crises, the government grows because we get scared and we say, government, save us. And the government says, sure, just give me your freedoms. And we say, OK, here you go. And the government grows, right? That's the basic exchange. <laughs> and, and Elijah did this masterful graphic, right, for those of you who have seen the book, about how over time with all these crises, Leviathan, which is this representation of government, gets bigger and bigger. And so the government never shrinks. Yeah. So when, we, when COVID and lockdowns and mandates and all this stuff was happening, Elijah and I were like, well, we've had this idea for a while, but now the world is such that Maybe we need this book now. Go for it. Right. So we try and be kind of responsive to what we feel is, is um, the next best book. So we've got a long list, but we're always trying to kind of prioritize and figure out what's coming next. Yeah. And just as a little spoiler alert, we're actually working on the script to cover this book in an episode in season one. So that won't be releasing this year. That'll be releasing the um, second batch with of seven through twelve mm -hmm. uh -huh, in uh, you know April May kind of area. So really good stuff. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about the creation of the show itself and some of the differences from um, the books themselves. Yep. I know a lot of people are like, oh, why did you kind of go away from um, the style? Yeah, the, the style and mm -hmm. stuff of of the original books. And I can speak to that a little bit, and that was part of our early discussions. Mm -hmm was being able to be like, okay, how can this be one big brand yeah. that they can all fit inside of and not feel like it's too disjointed or you know what, whatever it might be? And uh, do, you, do you want to speak a little bit to that well, conversation? Well, so in those discussions when, when you and I were talking, when you shared that Marvel idea, which you shared earlier in the live stream, that's what made it click for me. I read comic books a lot growing up as a kid. Um, and so, and I love the Marvel movies and the cinematic universe, and I just enjoy that stuff. But I clearly know, having read a lot of the comics, that you know the costumes are a bit okay. different, some of the backstories are different, some of the personalities, and so different mediums lend themselves to different things. And so, when you share that with me, I'm like, okay, now I can kind of conceptualize why it would be 
not just okay, but potentially a good idea to make some changes to the Tuttle Twins for this different format. And the way I look at it is, you know, the cartoon with this ambitious goal and being free and fun, right, it's just a fun cartoon that families can watch together, is gonna reach a ton of people, yeah. way more than the books. And so I think of it like a big funnel, right, where we can go bring in all these people from around the world who are gonna watch a cartoon. And then a lot of those people are gonna move further down the funnel and they're gonna wanna read the books. Oh, the and they're gonna, you know, some of them are gonna get the magazine and they're gonna do the curriculum and they're gonna keep going and, and learning this stuff down that funnel, but the cartoon with this fun format and Derek and Copernicus and you know some of these fun characters that we never needed in a book that's more educational. Like our books are, are more educational and a little bit entertaining. Yeah. And the cartoon, as everyone just saw, it is, goes the reverse. is the reverse, right? Yeah. It's just a fun kids cartoon with some ed uh, educational stuff uh, along the way. And so the books never really needed the kind of the gags and the silly characters yeah. and the all the comedy because we had kind of a different format that we were doing. But when we you know, talked about flipping it for the cartoon, it's like, oh yeah, we do need comic relief. We do need you know, these silly characters that we can have some fun with to move you know, the, the plot forward and crack jokes and keep some levity in it. Um, and so, so we've had some, I think, in the community over the months as we've been showing some images and things like that, like, oh, what's this? Grandma's different and things yeah. like that. But I think, as everyone just saw in the episode, it's going to play extremely well. And, and as you see in upcoming episodes, like, everyone's going to love it. For, even for those who are like, oh, but things are different, like, you'll get over it. Yeah. You'll see that this is going to work. The formula is going to work really well. It's something that I'm very confident in. And so th there's a shared universe, obviously shared principles. But um, this just allows, I think, for a bit more creative flexibility to create a fun kids cartoon that can reach the masses. And then through there, we can put them down the funnel, get them reading the books and learning even more about the ideas. Yeah, I mean, by and large, the reception from all of you has been very positive with the changes that we've made. Yeah. Um, there are a few little exceptions, and that's okay. You can't please everybody. But we see, um, I, I think it's interesting and, and worth noting that uh, what you and Elijah did was intended for print from mm -hmm. the beginning for, for an illustrated book and um, uh, approaching to cartoon, it was just a little bit of a different approach. And story-wise too, we wanted to have something that kind of played into these overall concepts of freedom. And so grandma being um, an immigrant from Cuba, mm -hmm. which we're going to be getting into in a later episode, is really essential to the overall story of what we're doing with this. And then another thing with yeah. that, Daniel, is that, and you kind of hint at it there, but I want to give it more of a point. When you're having like a season or a series of a show, you've got to have like plot arcs and you've yes. got to have story developments, which we never again really need in the book, right? It was just each book was its own little story and there was no vision or need for this kind of continuity. Yep. Um, and so as you just kind of teased, Grandma's got this whole backstory, which is going to lend itself to future episodes. And so again, this new format, this new big long-term project n needed a different approach, and so that's what, why we landed the way we did. Yeah, absolutely. And we've always wanted this show to be something that kids will choose over their options on YouTube, Disney+, Plus, you know, Netflix, whatever they're watching, that it's just something that they want to consume as adventure, entertainment, and really fun characters, and then they're, they're getting education right along with it rather mm -hmm. than um, necessarily just being like, oh, this is an education show. Homeschool time. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and very much that's the way we, we have the advantage of building off of the foundation that's already been built with that, with the books, and being able to lead people into the books for that deeper dive. So mm -hmm. I think there are, the two are going to really go well together. So, yeah, thank you for elaborating on all of that. Okay, um, what's your favorite part of the episode? Oh, gosh, where to pick. Um, Okay, I've got kind of an oddball answer. Okay. If you look at the research, taxpayers have to spend like two and a half billion dollars every year supporting film projects, TV shows, movies. Um, That's a lot of tax money going to rich people. Even <laughs> Right, and even if they don't like it or never watch it, taxpayers are on the hook for a lot of this stuff. This yeah. show wasn't supported by any taxpayers. It was nope. supported by investors. And so why do I say that was my favorite part of the episode? This whole episode was about the concept of helping voluntarily and not being taxed improperly and not kind of abusing the political process for those types of gains. And I think true to the spirit of the show, right, um, it's being financed in a way that avoids all that stuff. Yeah. A lot of film projects will go and ask the government, get tax breaks and tax subsidies. We deal with this at Libertas all the time, trying to make sure the government isn't just handing out money to all these people. And I love that this show is practicing what it preaches. It's a free market approach. It's supported by the community, by these investors. I think that's amazing and a testament to 
the integrity of teaching these ideas. And so I love that that was episode number one of like, hey guys, new show. And by the way, we're doing something completely different in a different yeah. way. So I, I, that was my favorite part is that it's so consistent with how we're doing this. It's kind of that Ethan line of a law that takes other people's money, gives it to other people's businesses. Right. That takes people's money, gives it to other people's businesses. That's lame. That happens? What? No. <laughs> and, 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 and really that that tax, that subsidy that happens in Hollywood is especially bad because like you said, it's it's going from the collective taxpayers to fund the rich yeah. and their projects. And so, not the coolest law in the world. And uh, we're gonna change that thing. law. Yeah, maybe we should, maybe <laughs> we should do something ought, uh... about that. But yeah, it's, it is very, we're very proud to be doing the show in the right way where it's being funded by you guys and not by some taxpayer. Along those lines, what character would you be in the TV show? Wow, what character would I be? Um, if you had to. Gosh, I, I would. I I like Copernicus a lot, <laughs> which people are probably scratching their head because I come off as very. Con Connor <laughs> is the opposite of Copernicus. Right. Copernicus is a little, little dense. Right. Let's just put it that way. Connor is very much not. He's very intelligent. Yeah, <laughs> and so I, 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 that's why I say like I feel like some people are scratching their head at that, but I don't know. I click with them so much that maybe I feel like. I, like it was the same thing with uh, what's his name in The Simpsons, Ralph, right? Yeah. Where Ralph it's like, oh, I, I would love to be like that. Maybe just for a day. Maybe I, not all the time. But I love how Copernicus ended up and and is going to be having some fun in the future. Yeah, so. for sure. No, Copernicus is 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 very fun. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I was going to get get to another one here. Um, okay. Any final notes that you'd like to share to everyone watching? I, I think you kind of wrapped it up a little bit, but yeah, just um, no. I, 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 if, I missed. If, if my excitement isn't uh, coming <laughs> out, then let me restate it again. Right? Like this is an exciting day. We've been working on this for a while, Elijah and I, for a lot longer. Always with this goal. Uh, like this isn't about selling stuff. Like I'm a capitalist. Yes, go buy your buy your merchandise. Go to the shop. Get everything. Speak right? For yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's all. About it. I'm a capitalist, <laughs> but this is a mission, right? Like our our goal. It's it's a mission. This can change yeah. the world. This isn't just about making money. And to all our investors watching, thank you. And you know, as you said, I think at the beginning, like we hope everyone is well rewarded along the way for investing in a what's going to be. I'm very confident, an extremely successful project. So all of that is important, but it's all to service and end. And you know, Daniel, as much as anyone, when we were getting those investors early on, we had all these people saying, I don't even care if I make money. Yes. I just want this to so exist. So many of you were so passionate about this, right. where you were just like, yeah, I'll, I'll throw money in, and I don't care if it vanishes. We're not going to make it vanish. We're doing our best to, to, to really make this a, a financially successful venture for everybody. Right. But yeah, the passion was very inspiring. It's, it's the mission. It's the cause. And, and even before, when we got started with this, the world hadn't gone to pot with yeah. all this crazy stuff. And so even now, more so than ever, like, like the books, for example, the books, you know, we were selling at this curve. And then 2020 hit. And the books Boom. exploded, right? And 2021, and and, Continuing and every, every, everything, the momentum is continuing. Why? Because people have seen the crazy, they've seen the problems, they want solutions. And when the Tuttle Twins is over here saying like, hey, come on over here and read our books. And now, go download the Angel app and watch the cartoon for free, right? Like the idea is this is a solution. It's not the solution. We're not going to make all the boo-boos better by you know just watching a cartoon and, and, and reading some books. Right. But it is a solution. It's something easy families can do. Um, we've had a lot of people waiting a long time reading the books for something like this cartoon. We've always, you know, hey, you should do a show and you should do a cartoon. And I'm like, yeah, we should, you know, how? <laughs> right? <laughs> and now we got you guys on the team to help do this. And so I'm just super jazzed. You guys are going to love future episodes, you know, as they're coming out. Like we've seen behind the scenes, been working on They are amazing. Your kids are going to love them. Let your kids watch them 20 times in a row. You'll feel good <laughs> about it, too, because they're learning. You can call it homeschooling. Uh, but it's just so exciting to have this project to where it is at the time. It's one of those things when preparation meets opportunity, right? Yeah. We've been at this a while with the books, Elijah and I. We've been at the cartoon before the world went crazy, right? Preparing all this stuff. Now is the opportunity. Now is when this stuff is needed more than ever. So thank you guys, especially the investors, for supporting this. Thank you for watching it and, and liking and subscribing and sharing and, and pushing this out there. Uh, because we need your help to do it. It's an ambitious goal. It's something I think we can achieve, and I think it's something we need to achieve. So thanks to you and the team for doing this. We're, we're just very excited. Thank you for those kind words, and I love what you said about the mission side of this. It really all did start with something you wanted for your kids. And again, I'm so passionate about this because it's something I want for my kids. It's something that I would have loved to have had as a kid, and mm -hmm. that's really the need we're trying to fulfill in the world. And it's very clear from all of you that there is a thirst for this out there. Oh, yeah. And again, this can be a really great contributing factor in helping kind of 
turn, turn the tables the other way for the better. So again, if you haven't already, download the Angel app on the Google Play Store or on um, the Apple Place, no, App Apple Store, Store. The Apple App Store, <laughs> um, and yeah, the first thousand get the Nifty gift, which is going to be a really cool exclusive gift that we'll explain sometime in the future. But for now, we'll see you on the next Tuttle Twins Tuesday. Signing off.